So uh, my name is Yuel, and uh, today I uh, will give a talk on uh, systematic fuzzing and testing of TLS libraries. I am a postdoc at the University of Bochum, and uh, I am a co-founder of Hackmanit GmbH, which is our company where we do pen tests and so on. So uh, I mean, we can agree that uh, transport layer security TLS is the most important security protocol that we use in now. So it is used to secure application layer data uh, transmitted over HTTP, SMTP, IMAP, and so on and so on. So if you go uh, to uh, Amazon and want to proceed to secure payments or something like this, then uh, we are uh, seeing this green lock and uh, this is why that we are using TLS. Okay, to come to this uh, last version of TLS, uh, this, this was a long way. So uh, the first version of uh, TLS was called actually SL, uh, SL Secure Socket Layer, and uh, was uh, released in 1994 by Netscape. And at the time, as I mentioned, it was called SSL. Uh, this uh, SL version 2 was deliberately broken, and uh, like one year afterwards, a new version, SL version 3, was released. Uh, then uh, in uh, 1998 or 1999, uh, IETF took uh, this SL version 3 as a basi basics for the new standard called transport layer security, and this is how uh, TLS 1.0 was achieved. And uh, TLS uh, in new version 1.1 and 1.2 came uh, uh, in 2006 and 2008 with new improvements, new extensions, new cryptographic primitives, and we can see now the development of TLS 1.3, which is coming to our browsers now. So uh, TLS has a long history, and it has also a long history of attacks. So uh, the first attacks appeared in uh, 1996 as uh, Wagner and Schneier presented uh, their paper uh, on analysis of SL version 3 protocol, where they showed some nice attacks on SL version 2 and 3. Then uh, in 1998, there was a Blackenbacher's uh, attack, uh, also called Million Message Attack. Maybe if you know the recent drone attack, Blackenbacher's attack was uh, the basis for this attack. Then there were 2002 some padding oracle attacks, and as TLS became more and more important, then it became uh, a target of more and more relevant attacks. And these attacks uh, became cool names like Beast, Crime, Breach, and so on, and Lucky 13. And in the recent times, also cool attack logos like Heartbleed, C early CCS, or Drone. Okay, so uh, as a security researcher, we uh, probably ask a question, so how can we test this attack? So if uh, somebody finds a new attack, how can we test this attack? Or maybe create a proof concept? Or if we have a new attack, then how can we, uh, how can we write a simple proof concept? Or maybe a better question, can we find such attacks automatically? And we did a brainstorming, and there is a simple approach to achieve this. It is a three-step approach that was published a few years, few years ago, and consists of three steps. So uh, in the first step, you collect TLS libraries. Then comes the second phase. And in the third step, you profit. Uh, this approach was uh, presented in South Park in the second season. And actually, it was uh, applied on collecting underpants. What is good about this approach is uh, then the, that you can apply this approach to every protocol you want. So to SSH, for John Paul, or IPsec, or recent uh, JSON Web Crypto API attacks. Uh, so this would not bring me probably to CCS. So we try to consider this second phase and how can we do this. OK. So what are the contributions of this talk and of this paper? So we designed a new flexible TLS framework for uh, fuzzing, testing, and writing attacks on TLS. Uh, and uh, it allowed us to find new bugs in OpenSSL, Botant, or Matrix libraries. Uh, we are not that good at defining new names, so it is simply called TLS Attacker. So. And it is an open source framework, so it is available at GitHub. 
Okay, so uh, in this talk, I will uh, present TLS Attacker, the basic design uh, uh, ideas behind this framework and the results we achieved and how can we use it. And I will give also some demos, but uh, first of all, I uh, will introduce the basic behind TLS protocol and behind the attacks that motivate the usage of this tool. Okay, so let's start with TLS. Uh, so uh, in order to establish a TLS uh, connection, first we execute a TLS handshake. So for example, if you execute TLS RSA handshake, the client first sends a client hello message which contains a list of cipher suites uh, or a list of algorithms that we are going to use and TLS versions. Then the server uh, uses a uh, response with a server hello message with a certificate message which contains a public key and uh, response with server hello done message. And client sends a client key exchange message with the uh, with the encrypted key, and then it sends chain cipher which actually said, up now we are going to encrypt every message. And sends a client finish message, the server responds with a chain cipher spec uh, and finish message. And at this point, both parts, are client and server, are authenticated and they can exchange application data. Okay, this was uh, a really simple uh, example of a protocol, TLS RSA handshake. However, we have uh, different versions of TLS, SSL. We have different cryptographic primitives that we use, for example, RSA, elliptic curves, or recently there came new uh, post-quantum cryptography algorithms like New Hope into TLS protocols. And uh, of course, we have AES, RC4, and Cha Cha uh, 20 or Poly 13.5. Uh, we have many extensions and uh, we have uh, protocol flows that are defined by these extensions that extend the complexity of TLS. Okay, so uh, taking back a uh, look at uh, this TLS protocol, TLS RSA handshake, uh, what the server can do, uh, the server can send, for example, an additional server key exchange message in elliptic curves, if you are elliptic curves, then uh, the client, in case of client authentication, can send additional certificate or certificate verify messages, and uh, there can be additional heartbeat messages that are used to uh, send uh, heartbeats uh, to uh, verify whether the connection is still alive. It is used in UDP. Okay, so uh, this complexity of TLS was the reason also for all these attacks that we see here, or most of these attacks. Uh, I'm not going to explain every attack, of course, but I will give you some basic ideas behind two attacks that are maybe uh, um, some motivation for the framework that we designed. So uh, the first one is early CCS, and the early CCS uh, works as follows. So imagine we have uh, this uh, uh, flow that uh, I designed, uh, that I showed, this TLS RSA handshake. And uh, what is important here that we have this client key exchange message, which actually uh, includes uh, an encrypted pre-master secret, which is used to derive uh, further master key. And what the attacker can do as a man in the middle, he can uh, delete this client key exchange message, and uh, this results in, a, 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 in that uh, the server computes the master key based on a zero value. And this was uh, a huge fault in uh, OpenSL in one uh, of the OpenSL versions, and allowed uh, to apply man in the middle attacks. Uh, further, uh, further attacks uh, on uh, in this way were applied by other researchers in 2015, last year, at Security Privacy and uh, Usenix, and they published, for example, the Frig attack, which uh, uh, you showed that uh, further attacks uh, on state machines, TLS state machines, are applicable. <clears throat> then we have uh, very famous. Uh, the Heartbleed attack. The Heartbleed attack works as follows. So after the TLS handshake is established, uh, the client can send a heartbeat message. It works as follows. So it uh, designs a string like CCS16 and defines a length of the string. And the server responds with a heartbeat response, hey, CCS16, uh, I am still alive. Uh, what the attacker could do, he could define uh, the same string like CCS16, but say uh, the string is of length uh, 1000. And uh, the server attempts to parse this message and read this data, however, the, it uh, overreads the buffer and uh, maybe reads some RSA key, private RSA keys, and sends it back to the, uh, to the server. 
to, uh, to the client. So if you need more information on this attack, please uh, take a look at this XKCD comic. Okay, good. So um, <coughs> these two attacks show that uh, TLS is not only about cryptographic attacks. It is also about attacks on state machines, on TLS state machines, because they are complex and uh, uh, the message order has to be followed uh, and verified uh, with, a, with a high care. So uh, we have, to, uh, for example, freak or early CCS attacks showing these uh, problems. And then we have buffer overflows, buffer reads, like Heartbleed or recent, uh, very recently, there were further attacks uh, on uh, uh, using buffer overrides and overrides on uh, OpenSSL. <clears throat> so uh, we need some tool for flexible analysis of TLS and for identifying these attacks and maybe triggering these attacks and uh, finding the vulnerabilities. So what do we need is, uh, if you take a look at uh, this T basic TLS workflow, we need, uh, uh, we need uh, a tool that allows us to maybe delete some messages in the workflow, uh, add some or duplicate uh, the messages in the workflow, like duplicate a client key exchange message and send it twice. Uh, we need to execute some modifications in the messages, not only on, uh, on the encrypted messages, but also on the padding bytes and uh, to do this very carefully. And uh, we need to also detect uh, the invalid behavior of the server. And uh, if uh, we detect something, we need to reproduce the same protocol flow and execute it again or maybe report it to uh, the server administrators. <coughs> okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, why we created TLS Attacker. So TLS Attacker is a Java-based framework and uh, it uh, consists of several modules. So uh, it uh, has a basic uh, TLS module. So we implemented the wall TLS handshake with uh, the wall protocol where the, there are this uh, heartbeat and handshake messages are defined. It uh, uses transport TCP and UDP and uh, it has modules uh, based on top of TLS attacker which uh, allow you to uh, execute some uh, or define new attacks like padding oracles, black and buffer attacks and so on. And uh, it also Oops. It also has some uh, fuzzing uh, capabilities. Okay, so uh, now I will uh, present you basic concepts where, uh, what, at the heart, uh, what, that are at the heart of TLS Attacker. And the basic concept is called modifiable variable. It is quite simple concept, but uh, this is useful for fuzzing purposes. And I will show you a, a simple example how we use it in protocol messages. So uh, we defined the concept of modifiable variables and uh, modifiable variables define basic data types uh, with some modifications, for example, integer, byte arrays, and so on and so on. So the best way to introduce modifiable variables is to give you an example. So imagine we have uh, a modifiable integer where we set the value to 30. Then we set some modification like uh, add modification to 20. Uh, to this variable, and if we uh, invoke a getter method like uh, integer get value, then instead of getting 30, we get 50. Okay, uh, now this uh, seems to be quite stupid and simple, but uh, okay, yes, it, it is, uh, but uh, this is quite useful for defining new protocol flows, and we use further modifications for XORing, shuffling, deleting byte arrays, and so on, and so on. And this can be defined in protocol messages. So if we define protocol messages, we define, uh, for example, a, a client hello message, which is based on these modifiable variables. And uh, uh, every variable that is used in uh, this client hello message is defined as a modifiable variable. For example, cipher suite, cipher suite length, and so on, and so on. So we can uh, dynamically adapt these variables on the fly. Uh, these protocol messages are stored in a message list and are serializable in XML. So what does it mean? So uh, you can define uh, your protocol flow in uh, XML uh, and arbit with arbitrary messages. So uh, previously, if you, used, uh, if you wanted to trigger, for example, Heartbleed or other attacks, you needed to uh, patch OpenSSL or use a different framework. And uh, in, uh, with TLS Attacker, it is simple. You can just uh, define uh, 
a sequence of TLS messages like client hello, server hello, certificate, and so on and so on. And these uh, uh, protocol messages are uh, taken, serialized, deserialized, and executed against the server. So uh, as you can see, you can simply define new protocol flows, for example, by uh, defining new RSA client key exchange message, or just uh, skip client key exchange message by uh, deleting these fields. And uh, what is also cool is uh, that uh, you can serialize also these modifiable variables. So in order to define a hard blade attack, you just uh, define something like this. So uh, you take the heartbeat message, you uh, uh, get this payload length, as I, and as I have shown that there is this integer add modification where you add uh, 20,000 Per, uh, bytes to the original payload length, and this way you can, from XML, with a few lines of code, you can just uh, define hard blade attack. Okay, okay so uh, now I hope that uh, you are convinced now that uh, TLS attacker is uh, uh, easy to use for attacks, for fuzzing purposes, and for executing a test suite. So uh, uh, there, there are a few attacks in TLS attacker. There is some uh, fuzzing approach that allows you to fuzz uh, TLS server uh, with these uh, um, variable modifications. And uh, there is a test suite that allows you to uh, test uh, your TLS server whether, uh, or implementations that uh, where they are vulnerable or not to the TLS attacks. So uh, I prepared some demos. So uh, so as already mentioned, uh, TLS attacker uh, is open source framework. So uh, you can uh, you can go to the GitHub page and uh, you will see. Uh, you will see how to compile and run uh, TLS attacker. There are some uh, basic uh, tests uh, how to execute it. So for example, if you want to uh, execute the basic TLS attacker client, you just need to run Java jar TLS client and connect to some host port and uh, you execute a TLS workflow. Uh, you can uh, compile it. Uh, there, there is uh, uh, there's, there are examples how to define your workflows in Java or examples with XML. Uh, you, you can uh, use uh, git clone to clone it or you can uh, uh, use the recent versions. Uh, the release 1.2 1, 1 is uh, the recent one which contains some uh, tests for lucky 13 attacks and uh, uh, new uh, uh, and uh, the, the stuff that I presented uh, today. So uh, what I uh, so what you can do so I have uh, now prepared a TLS attacker now uh, I downloaded it so what you do is uh, for example if you download it uh, you, in the recent release you just uh, write Java jar TLS attacker client and then you can say connect uh, com 443 And what happens, uh, you execute a handshake, a TLS handshake with all, all the, uh, all, uh, that uh, a TLS handshake against the Google server and you get uh, the debug output of uh, the TLS attacker. So uh, uh, I also prepared here is, uh, I have uh, old OpenSSL server running, which is vulnerable to uh, the Heartbleed attack. And uh, so, as, um, so what uh, you can use, uh, as you can see, I have uh, a simple XML output, XML, uh, XML uh, workflow trace with protocol messages. What you can do, you can uh, take this as an input to TLS attacker. and execute it against, uh, against the server. And uh, what you will see is uh, uh, is the handshake, uh, if you, uh, 
is the, is the TLS handshake that is executed against the TLS attacker with uh, client key, chain, chain self-respect, and so on, and so on, with these messages. If you want to uh, maybe adapt uh, this TLS handshake, then uh, th this, is this, uh, this is very simple. What you need to do is uh, just maybe duplicate RSA clear client key change message. You take it, you duplicate it, insert it, and if you execute the TLS protocol once more, then uh, we will see that uh, there is a new uh, protocol flow which consists of two client key exchange messages that we send against the server. This is not possible with OpenSSL or with other tools that we have. Okay, and of course we have uh, this, uh, we have also Heartbleed attack, so as I presented uh, previously, uh, so uh, in uh, this case, we are uh, defining a new heartbeat message with a payload length where we add some new data to, to the heartbeat message. And uh, let's say we want to add some more data. And if we add it to, uh, to the message, then uh, we get a response from the server consisting of, of several zeros and so on. So this is how you can define your own protocol flows if you are a researcher or pen tester, and you can, you can play with TLS libraries on different uh, uh, fast proof of concepts. Okay, so uh, there is a wiki about uh, uh, all the attacks uh, and uh, how to use fuzzing, test suite, and so on and so on. So uh, this is what you can take a look at it and if you are interested in using TLS attacker. Okay, so uh, we implemented uh, these uh, attacks and uh, TLS fuzzing and uh, this TLS test framework and uh, we executed the tests against several uh, servers and uh, several libraries and uh, we found uh, some attacks for, for example, padding oracle attacks in OpenSSL, Botan or Matrix SSL library. Uh, Blackenbacher attack in Matrix SSL library was discovered. And uh, we discovered that, uh, for example, OpenSSL, GNU TLS were not properly checking the lengths of the messages, and it was uh, possible to insert uh, arbitrary code or arbitrary bytes into the messages. And we found also some out of bounds uh, reads, writes in uh, one pre version of OpenSSL or in Botan. Uh, I will just to give you an idea so how useful and how important it is to use. Uh, TLS test frameworks, I will just give you an idea about uh, the OpenSSL padding oracle vulnerability that uh, I discovered in April. So uh, what was the problem? So we saw by the, in the talk by Jean-Paul that uh, ASCBC is uh, really a bad idea to use in SSH or it's vulnerable to attacks and uh, the, uh, it, can, it can be used, uh, ASCBC is also vulnerable in TLS to padding, padding oracle attacks. You don't have to know the uh, uh, the wall padding oracle attacks just to, to have this idea that the attacker, uh, by using uh, ASCBC, he can modify some ciphertext and uh, uses the server as an oracle to validate whether the padding is valid or not. And uh, the challenge is to uh, not to reveal the padding validity, so always we need to have the same error message, and uh, this. It's not enough, we need also have constant time getting padding and HMIC validation. This is necessary for the lucky, uh, for example, for, to toward the lucky 13 attack. So uh, if we have constant time HMIC validation and uh, if we have the same error messages, then we should be secure against uh, lucky 13 attack. It is not too, that easy to write a patch for lucky 13. Uh, for example, Adam Langley wrote a patch for OpenSSL and it was like 500 lines of code, so it is uh, quite complicated to write it. And uh, so we investigated uh, OpenSSL and uh, the patched uh, library, and we found out that uh, by writing this patch for Lucky13, uh, they introduced a new padding oracle attack, which uh, transferred a, a timing attack into a direct oracle. So we could, uh, with uh, our TLS attacker, we could discover that uh, the server responds with different padding or uh, uh, TLS alerts when using different uh, paddings. So uh, this is bad because it transfers 
very hardly exploitable timing attack to a direct attack, and one could say that uh, it cannot be really worse, yes, but it can, because in matrix SSL, for example, they transferred a timing attack into a buffer overflow and the server. Okay. Okay, so uh, now uh, matrix SSL is using uh, TLS attacker uh, for test suite and uh, for before each release, they're using TLS attacker uh, as a test suite uh, to check whether they are vulnerable to some attacks. Okay. This brings me to the con conclusions. So uh, this, I want you to know that uh, this talk is not about bashing uh, crypto developers. And uh, because maintaining a crypto library is very hard. Uh, new code and new patches for specific attacks can introduce new flows and uh, it is very hard to maintain. So therefore, by writing new patches, by uh, writing new code, uh, systematic fuzzing and evaluation uh, is needed and uh, should be applied to uh, libraries, uh, to crypto libraries and TLS. Uh, for this purpose, we wrote TLS Attacker, which is not only for the developers, but also for researchers and pen testers. And uh, it is not perfect. Uh, there are some uh, downsides for, for example, there are some needs for fuzzing improvements for development of uh, TLS 1.3 and further extensions. The client side tests are needed, better fuzzing strategies, but uh, it is on its way and uh, it is currently used. Okay, thank you. Thank you.